And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley. Before we get to the interview here with a great guest I've got for you, this is brought to you by the Independent Entertainment Network, which is a new network that myself and Anthony Williams, a friend of mine, have started. We're getting growing. We've got about seven people on the network now, and we want to continue to grow that. So thanks for tuning in. I um, want to talk to you about a new affiliate sponsor that I have, Tattooed and Successful. I'm wearing their shirt. Bet on yourself. And they are always the cool shirts that I wear. I like to wear things that have, you know, kind of one of those names. So if you would like to get some tattooed and successful clothing, use code TANK at tattooedandsuccessful.com at checkout, and you'll get a nice little discount. All right. Before we get to the, or now we will get to the guest. <laughs> um, Nita Barnard is my guest today. She is a local business owner in Emmett, Idaho. She owns Revel, Re, Revel Skin Therapy. I know I was going to mess that up. Here we go. Nita, welcome to the show. So good to be here. Yeah, it's super exciting. You know, I it, people who interact with me on Instagram and anywhere that I do anything, they always just kind of, I, I kind of gravitate to those people who have that kind of entrepreneur, <clears throat> entrepreneurial spirit, people who want to, you know, bet on themselves and do those, do those types of things. So your story's great. I always like seeing your stories with your, your books, your little book that's open that's got the notes in there. I always thought you wrote them in there, so it was kind of cool to see that, but <laughs> always trying to just make people better, and that's what we're looking yes. for. Yes. I love that. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your business, you know, just, we'll go over a lot of it, but just kind of give us a brief synopsis of who you are. For sure. Um, my name is Nita. I'm an esthetician, which is a skincare professional. I do facials, waxing, that sort of thing um, in Emmett. So I have a studio in town. Um, I've been married for 20 years. I've got a couple of kids, one in high school, one in middle. And I am building this little skincare empire to hopefully be able to be um, my husband's sugar mama is the hope, is that he can take a back seat. Um, he has a very demanding job, and it's very high stress, and I would I like to be able to take some of that off of his shoulder. So that's part of the inspiration for being um, self-employed. So how long, has, how long have you had the business? Now, we talked a little bit before that it was called something else before, but the, between the two names and everything, how long have you had it? So I will be coming up on year four, uh, in February. Okay. So you mentioned that you have some high school age kids and, or you have a high school age kid and then you have another one. Um, this was kind of like something that you always wanted to do. Did you do this before you had children or have you been doing it for, you know, is it just a new thing? So it's, you know, it's interesting. I've had a bazillion jobs. I've had I've been in the restaurant industry. I worked um, doing promotions. Like I uh, got to dress up as a piece of garlic for Eclipse Mints back in the day. I did um, worked in the mortgage industry. I've had all kinds of jobs. And I used to think that that made me really flaky. Um, but now I didn't go to aesthetic school until I was 35 and I'm 38 now. Um, and so I used to think that made me a flaky person, but now it's like all of these seemingly unconnected skills have have culminated suddenly into this career that didn't come to fruition until my mid thirties. And so, um, yeah, it wasn't, it, it like, I've always been obsessed with eyebrows, but I didn't even know what an esthetician was until my twenty. And so just these different things about me that I enjoy have kind of like bled into this great career that I had no idea was in store for me. Well, and it's interesting because I have this conversation with my wife a lot because I do have, you know, I've, I've done multiple things myself. You know, I changed tires. I went to college. I have two degrees in education and then I quit doing that after four years and now I sell window coverings and I'm doing this. And so my wife's always kind of like, are you just going to settle on one thing or are you going to continue to just keep throwing things at the wall? And I think that that's the entrepreneurial spirit. I think that that's yeah. the way that it is. You don't ever see these people just doing one thing. They always have all these ideas and then finally after after a while boom it all comes together so is that kind of the way you look at it is that the way you feel about it 
It is the way I feel about it now. There is a good quote that I think I shared in my stories, and the gist of it was all of it's experience, all of it is knowledge, and at some point you're going to be able to use that in a way that maybe you don't even can't even anticipate um, where there, it's going to be useful. You know, like um, I used to want to write um, menus as professionally, like food menus, Interesting. and. That, that's a skill that I've been able to use with writing my menus for work or describing things in my stories or, you know, so it's these just these things that you just they seem so that's something that I would tell young people um, is pay attention to those little things that that turn you on and water them because you just don't know where that's going to lead. Yeah. Um, it may not be a professional thing. It might be a, a passion project or something, but I think. I think that paying attention to those idiosyncrasies that are uniquely yours are clues. You're right. It's interesting because there's always there's always people who always talk about like, you know, I made these mistakes. I don't want I don't want to repeat these mistakes. I don't, you know, I'm not proud of what I did in the past. And I I don't necessarily think that you should look at it that way. And I think that a lot of the guests that I have on the show don't look at it that way. You may have made those mistakes, but those mistakes have pushed you. And that's I don't look at anything as a mistake. I think I look at it as a learning moment because you mm -hmm. pivot and you build off of that. Um, it's funny that you were talking about writing menus. If you could re rewrite the cheesecake factory menu for me, that'd be great. <laughs> I hate, I hate going to the cheesecake factory <laughs> for the fact that it is a novel. And then yeah, they throw at least, the, at, at least, the, yes. And the last time, at least the last time it was like, there was, advertisements in between the menu options and it just is overwhelming as a guest and i will say that when you have that many things on a menu it's very difficult to pull all of them off excellently yep. and those type of restaurants and even services where people are trying to do all of them and they're kind of mediocre at them instead of excelling in one or two things um, is kind of a turnoff for me from a customer experience standpoint anyway. Right. Yeah. And it was funny. We were there last weekend with my brother and I was just sitting there going, I can't pick, I can't pick, I can't pick, I can't pick. And, and we were all that way. All four of us. Yeah. Were sitting, well, not my eight year old. She knew what she wanted. She wanted she knew. spaghetti or mac and cheese or whatever she got. I couldn't remember, but she knew. So the kids menu is really small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm surprised that they haven't like, so many people have had that feedback about that particular chain. I'm surprised that they haven't pivoted that yeah. because um, something I'm personally passionate about is guest experience. And so all of the things that lead up to their experience, what is it like walk, walking in the door? What is it like looking at your Instagram? All of those things inform a guest experience of you. And so those little frustrations take, are negative, you know? And so I'm, I'm, I have a hard time with, with those when there's just, you can take that out and just take out that conflict, you know, take out the advertisements at least. And it makes it yep. so much easier for the guests. Yep. That novel is, is a little daunting sometimes. <laughs> so let's talk about what you're, what you're doing now. You said you're an esthetician. What kind of services do you offer? And, and what is, what is your favorite thing to do? Cause you talked about having a menu. So it sounds like you probably just kind of work on the things that you're best at. I do. Um, so, um, waxing brows and facials are my two, um, my top two services. I do full body waxing. Um, I do lash lifts, which is like a perm for your lashes. It curls oh, them. Wow. <laughs> um, I know the things that chicks Sorry. do. I, I don't know a whole lot about these types of things. So yeah. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. but facials are my flagship experience and that's really where, um, where my passion lies is creating an experience and just, um, making somebody just the center of restoration and relaxation and of course skincare but for me the skincare is like the cherry on top and it's the experience that really turns me on yeah and i think that that's kind of one of those things that when when you like as a male you know i buy my wife from time to time i'll buy her massages or you know yeah. facial or stuff like that and the idea to me is that she's going in there and she's going to have a relaxing time and she's going to enjoy the experience like you're talking about and she'll want to go back and she'll want to do it again and it'll seem like a treat instead of just like, oh, well, here you go. 
Um, so yeah, I can understand that completely. And the experience making them want to come back is, is a big deal because you want repeat mm -hmm. customers. Right. And there's just things that, you know, um, going to the hair salon is kind of a busy thing. It's a high energy. Um, and so having a place where it's just, it's very tranquil in my space. I have candles. I mean, the whole, I think of all of those things, once again, harking to that guest customer experience, I have a warmer for their clothes. So when they're done, they, they have warm clothes to put on. You just, those things that really enhance yeah. the whole sensory situation that someone, um, enjoys when they're with me and so that is and it's building relationship and so getting to even you know the whole point of your show um my i very much my core value is creating connection around people and with people and that bleeding out into the community and for me my work is just the vehicle that gets me to connection and that is, that is something that, you know, it, it's funny because this, this conversation comes up. I know you've listened to the show, but it comes up all the time with it because I think that connecting with people is a huge thing. And a lot of people will sit there and they'll say something negative about someone or something or whatever, but they never really know when they're going to run into someone who could make a change for them or they could help them. And that's, that's what I like. I mean, you know, honestly, like I've watched your stories. I've been around you. We've been connected through you know, an, a, a, someone else, you know, you heard, mm -hmm. you heard my interview with Desiree, Desiree's mm -hmm. with you and mm -hmm. we're connected. Right. And then you start spreading things on your story and I'm start sharing things in my, because we, we gravitate towards that type of interaction and that's mm -hmm. really what it's about sharing it with others and building other people up. And this for me has always been showing other people that success is not one thing. It's whatever you want it to be. And that's what I love about it is that I can have you on talking about skincare. I can have you talking about your experiences that you've had through the year and through your life. And it's different for everyone. So that's, what's really cool about it. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about that because I know we've just talked about your skincare stuff, but you know, you've, what are some of the things that you, that you felt out that made you want to push forward into the next thing? Let's talk about that a little bit. So my whole, um, my goal is to be able to make enough so I can, what I tell my husband, I like to fuck, I want, I want fuck around time. I want time to do things that maybe I don't make money at, which is being involved in my community, volunteering on boards. Um, I just started a women's dinner, monthly dinner for business women in my town because we're kind of cut off geographically from everybody else. And so the things like that does the, the women's groups that she's a part of, I love them, but they're so far away and they're not women that I see in my day to day life. So I wanted to bring that here. Um, so I started that um, and I'm a part of my chamber in town. And so that, that is the bread and butter for me. I, I'm, I'm doing that even that is my goal to be able to finance my life enough to, that I can have free time to really invest in this place that I live yeah, and be with the, people that, that are amazing, other amazing business owners, you know, and, and keeping the health of our local economy healthy, it, it matters. Yeah. And that is, that's one of the things that, you know, I live in Boise and I did live in Star for a little while, but it's like you get to the point where you're really trying to be involved in so many different things and it's tough to do. So I applaud you for that because it's really hard to find time. Um, Emmett's kind of a smaller town, right? And it's it is. not, I feel like it's not going to, it's just like Star. It's like, it's not going to stay that way for long. Idaho is growing so rapidly. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there's a ton of new construction in Emmett as well because my there job is. takes me throughout Treasure Valley. So you're getting more and more people over there it's kind of one of those bedroom communities, but then again, it's, you know, what, 10, 15 miles from any other city really. Mm -hmm. And that isn't very far, but it is kind of a long drive when you're, when, when you're thinking about everywhere else you go. And I, you know, I'm, yes, we're growing. Um, there's a lot of construction and there's some concern with that, um, especially with our school system. And there's reluctance to um, improve our local schools. We have a hard time getting support that way. But I really think when 
you can maintain that feeling of community if you're in it, if you're right. doing the things, if you're part of the chamber, if you know the other business owners, if you wave to people on the road as you drive past them in the neighborhood, you can grow and maintain the community. And that's my goal. I think that's important because I'm not from here and there's a lot of hate from people that come from out of state. And some of it might be warranted, but from my experience, I'm, I get to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time pe with people and they tell me things that they don't tell anybody else. And most of the people that come here want the same things that are already here. Yeah. And some of them don't. And some of them I wish probably <laughs> that they weren't here, but you're going to get some of that. But overall, the overall majority of the, cause I get a lot of new guests. That's how they find me is through IG. Right. Um, the overwhelming majority of them want that community and want the small town feeling and want to preserve what makes Idaho incredible. And I just want to be a voice for that and not be a person that comes to a place that I'm not born in and take, yep. you know, I, I, there's, there's something, there is some validity in that argument that, that people come from out of state because of the, at least in my community, our property taxes are a lot lower than surrounding areas. And that's why they move sometimes. And they're not invested in the actual people that are there. They're there because of the taxes. Yeah. And so I want to highlight that there are so many people that are making the place great. For instance, we have a steakhouse in town. Um, they've been open for several years now. They're not from here. They're from California. But if it wasn't for them, the 100-year-old building that they're in would be crumbling. They're, they have several employees, so they're bringing economic prosperity. They're providing a place for people to connect. And if it wasn't for those out-of-state or transplanters, we wouldn't have that. And we should highlight and be grateful, you know. So that's important to me, to be a part of it and be making it better. Well, and I think, you know, we're both kind of in the same type of deal, customer service sale. I mean, really, you're a salesman, you're selling your products. Yes. Um, and that's, and, and you have, you provide a service. So you're selling that service, but it's the same thing with us. You know, I'm selling window coverings throughout the day and I walk into a lot of houses and I will tell you, you know, 75% of the houses that I walk into are brand new houses built with someone who's from out of state. And that doesn't, I, I have conversations with them. I interact with them. You know, I kind of tell them a little bit about myself and, um, you know, it's funny because they are good people. You know, a lot of them are, um, a lot of them are law enforcement. A lot of them are f f out of, you know, emergency service people. And, and those are the kind of people that I want here. You know, I want to feel more protected in my neighborhood. I want to know that there's someone who could defend me. I mean, I can defend myself, but I want to, you know, right. I want to know that there's other people that are that way. And they do, like you said, they want a lot of what we want. Um, but there is, you know, one or two that are not that way and, and you run into them. But I think that people don't realize that there's people like that everywhere. It doesn't matter. Everywhere. There's a lot of people in this state that were native to this state that think just like the people that they think are coming here. So it's, it's kind of, right. it's kind of weird, but I, I think you gotta, you gotta make that decision yourself and that's all there mm -hmm. is to it. You can't get to know someone just by the way that they look or the way that they talk or anything like right. that. And that's, you know, I mean, that's something that that's why I got behind the brand that I'm wearing right now. I mean, they're called tattooed and successful. And you look at it, someone sees your arm, someone sees my arm. And the first thing they think is there's a tattooed thug. I mean, that's changing over time, but that doesn't mean that you can't be a successful person just because you have tattoos or right. the color of your skin or where you're from. I mean, it's a, hating people from other states is it's kind of the same thing as being, you know, I, I don't want to dumb it down to racism, but it's like, there's a reason it, it really is the same thing. We're you're making segregating a, people. You're making assumptions based on preconceived ideas and some might ring, but you just, like you said, having a conversation, it's really hard to hate someone up close. And when you can find something that you have in common with them, and that's, I mean, you know, from my stories, I try to share things from both sides of the aisle because I think we spend so much time um, and we're pushed to like make it the other, talk about the other and this tribalism. And we have so much more in common if we focus on the good things, like we're, we're exacerbating 
the negative by focusing so much on the negative. And I just think that there's a lot of positive to be had. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. It's like we as a society buy negativity by the most part. And then, so the media sells us this negativity. And so now we're just going to think that everything's negative. We don't know the truth unless we do the research ourselves. And if you're watching the news, not a real good place to find the truth. Not a real good place. And really to honest, the best, that's why we need conversations and talking to people and connecting. Like technology is so fabulous for so many things, but it is not a substitute from looking at somebody in the face over dinner and trying to understand each other. Yeah. It's definitely a lost art. I mean, and that's, you, you sit here and you're texting and you're, you know, you're doing whatever you're doing and you, then you don't have that conversation. I, I would rather call someone and talk to them. Um, that's the way that I've always been, but you have to, you also cannot not do it because if you don't, then you're going to be lost in the shuffle. And this new generation that's coming up is the technology generation. So we have to learn to work with them or go the yeah. way of the dodo, right? Mm-hmm. So I really, I think it's really cool that you're getting involved in the community. You talked a little bit about working with the chamber. Um, one of the things that you were talking about when um, I was like, hey, we need to get you on, you know, when you were talking about working at, with, at the school and that was really enjoyable for you. I was a mm-hmm. teacher before. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of one of those things where I see it from both sides because parent involvement sometimes can be a little crazy, but if you're on the right hand side, how are you involving yourself with that? What are you doing there? Um, so I listen remotely to all of the um, board meetings just to know what's going on. Um, and then I am a part of a curriculum review. Right now we are possibly bringing in a new history curriculum. And so I'm a part of that committee that's kind of pick going through it and seeing if it matches the state standards, which it's been an education all in itself. These yeah. stand, I mean, they are spelled out. You have to do this. You have to do this. And so now we're going through with a fine tooth comb. Does it meet this requirement? Is it, you know, and looking for bias, is it presenting it uh, neutrally? Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause that's also a concern with um, curriculums that are coming through. We, I want my kids to make their own choices. I want teachers to teach my kids how to think critically. And right. so, that has been, and we've only made, I think, two meetings so far, and it's probably going to be a nine-month process or something like that, or eight-month process. So just that little bit has opened my eyes. Um, and that's the most of what I've done as far as the school. And I've done, um, I got to speak at the alternative high school about being a small business owner. And that has been, that was awesome. That was awesome to talk to the kids. And they're so thoughtful and even the ones that are a little rough around the edges, you know, they, they bring some great ideas and some awesome questions. I was really impressed with how engaging that they were. And, um, I, I grew up in a really dysfunctional home, which is a very mild, that's nice. And, um, so I see a lot of like, I just want kids to know, that you can make choices different than what your parents are making for you. Right, and exactly. I felt really incredibly blessed to be able to like, be like, I was the kid that got the stuffed animals from the cops when the cops came to my house. I was that kid right. and I still turned out okay. And so that, that was moving to me. I felt like I was able to do something good with some of the stuff that I had gone through and maybe connect with some of those kids. Well, and I think that's a big thing because I think that a lot of times you hear and, and, and you think that circumstances define you and they do not. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. And that's a great story to hear because you can pull yourself out of that pit if you want. And honestly, most people only see the end result. They never see the beginning. And, and it's, it's where you came from. And a lot of people judge. I hate that because a lot of people judge like, Oh, he's driving around a brand new car. Well, mm. he's driving around a brand new car. Why? Do you know why he's driving around a brand new car? I can't afford a brand new car. Well, what are you doing to better yourself? What are you doing to build on that? What are you doing to get that brand new car? If that's important to you, right? Um, so that's a great way to look at it. Yeah, I, you know, the I have a hard time personally with victim mentality because it's not helpful. 
And so even if you're struggling or have had a shitty situation, falling, succumbing to it is not helpful. And so you can inform your, use that to inform you and become a stronger person. And I think talking to our kids about being resilient and yes, these happen and it's important to acknowledge and it's important to feel the feelings. But like you said, that doesn't define you. It can inform this incredible launching pad to be something awesome. Right. Yeah. And it's crazy because, you know, we grew up, we're, we're pretty close in age and I'm assuming Uh that my parents were always like, go to college, get a degree, go do this because I want you to have more than I had and, and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I think that those alternative school types are the ones that we need. We need, it. you don't have to go to college. You can learn a trade. You can be successful in that. You can build your own company. You can do all these things without having a degree, but we, we, we sent it down this path of you have to have a degree. And that is, that's a bunch of bullshit. I don't agree it's, with it. It is bullshit. It. I don't believe it either. And um, like one cool thing about our school district is we have Payette River Technical Academy which is it's attached to the high school, but it's um, not attached to the high school. And they do, my son's in their culinary program. They just opened an aerospace program. Like they have their own hangar at Sawyer Field. Um, They do um, automotive, like all of the technical things. And so they're giving kids actual tangible skills. And whether or not my son becomes a chef, doesn't matter to me, but at least he's going to be able to cook for himself. Right. And I, th- that has got to be part of the conversation always, I think is like, and talking about return on investment, you know, um, if we're looking at it from a business standpoint, um, my school was around $10,000. Well, I made that up easily in the first eight months after I graduated. Not that that's a move for everybody. We do need doctors and people that are willing right. to take out incredible amount of loans, but I think it's wild that we expect our kids to know who they're going to be at 18. And I, I tell my kids, I'm like, get a trade. Even if you don't want to do it forever, you've got a great return on investment. You can make great money as an electrician and then go pay cash for what you really want to do. And then you have a barterable skill. So if shit hits the fan, you have something, you have a tangible skill you can barter uh, an electric trade anytime, you know? And so I try to get my kids to think about that and not think that once they make their decision, that's their decision for their whole entire life. Because I didn't, obviously we've talked about that. I did you didn't either. Like you right. walked through different professions and, you know, and, and so I, I think that's something young people need to be aware of that there are other ways to have a successful life and it doesn't have to be that one track. You decide to be a pediatrician and that's, just that's where you go or you decide to be whatever it is. I, I love that you called you, you thought about your return on investment because I think about, I never thought about it that way, like college. And mm. I can guarantee you if I continued to do what I was doing, there would be no return on my investment because there's no way that I could ever even afford to pay my student loan bills teaching. Yeah. And, but Again, I don't want to knock that like you were talking about. There are people who want to be doctors. There are people who want to be teachers. There are people that I truly believe that they love what they're doing and they say that they're doing it because they love it. But then there Mm -hmm. are also people that I see that are doing it just to get by, you know? Yeah, or they think they should be doing it and spend time in school and then realizing they've, you know, like you said, or saddling down themselves with all of this debt for what to what end? And I just, I, not that they shouldn't, not that, like you said, not that kids shouldn't, but we should be having a more well-rounded conversation of what it looks like. Yeah. In the end, in the end result, there should be those people who are talking about what the actual return is, like you're talking about. That's, oh man, makes me want to teach a class. Maybe not. I don't want to teach. <laughs> but I get, like it, th- those are things that we don't learn about anymore. And I just think it's ridiculous that, we're going to learn some of these things, but we don't learn the basic skills of what that's going to look like. Go and get all the student debt you can to get an education and not know what you're going to get back when you do it. You need to have, they need to have a class before you take that class. You know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's been awesome having this conversation. I really enjoy it. Let's talk about where we can find you, who can come visit you, what you got going on. 
I know you're on Instagram. Yeah. Talk about that. I am. I am on Instagram. Um, that's where I'm most active. Um, from there, you can find all of my contact details. If you'd like to come see me in the studio, you can shoot me a text. You can find my um, text number there. And I'm booked out about six to eight weeks, um, which I feel very, very fortunate. Um, I have a wonderful clientele who take very good care of me. And Instagram is the best place. From there, you can get to my little website. You can get to my scheduling and anything else. And I will say this because this is always my thought process when I think about like skincare or anything like that. It's a great Christmas gift. Do you have gift cards? I do. I have good gift cards and they, yes, they're like hard gift cards. They're not flimsy paper. So you can actually keep them in your wallet and not lose them um, with no expiration date. Oh, that's awesome. That's always a great one. Like my, <laughs> it's funny cause I gave my wife a spa package and it took her probably two years to use it, but it didn't have an expiration uh -huh. date, which was nice. <laughs> yes you don't you, you if you don't use it you lose it nope that's great no well awesome so we have one last question and i know that this is always this is always the one that sometimes stumps people but i know you've kind of answered it once before but i'm assuming that over over the last couple months you've thought about it a little bit more so um, that question is you know the show is called shaping success and success is different for every individual how do you define success and what is the shape of your success I define success as using my gifts for profit and for the betterment of my community. And that's, I mean, that really covers it. I think that's great. I mean, I love the fact that you've talked about your community so much and you can totally tell that you love it and you want to just build that up to be something that is awesome. So I really do appreciate that. You can tell that that's there. Well, you know, I want to say thank you for taking the time to be on the show. It's been great. And I look forward to, you know, watching and following and, and seeing how much more you grow. Cause being booked out six to eight, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty dang good booking. So I feel very stuff. lucky. Well, I'm so glad that we've gotten to connect and I'm thanks to thankful to Des that she turned me on to you. It's, um, I love seeing that there's a local great Boise podcaster that we get to enjoy. And so I'm going to keep sharing your stuff. That last conversation, um, that actor really was such a great, I was completely captivated by him. So um, I'm enjoying even seeing the evolution of you and your guests and the types of people that you're attracted to. It's really been valuable for me. Yep. It's been exciting and it, it only gets better. The conversations, you know, like when I started doing this, I was writing everything down and now I write down like two or three things because it just comes out. It doesn't feel natural when I'm trying to do like just an interview. It's, it's, it's one of those things where I want people to know that this is really me and this is how I connect to people. So it's fun. I look forward to Great. doing it for a lot longer. <laughs> I hope so. Well, I hope to bump into you in person at some point. Um, but thank you for having me. You will. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll make it a point the next time I'm over there if I have time to stop by and just say hi. So I'd love it. All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> have a good one. Yep, you too. All right, everyone. Well, that is the end of the show. I want to thank you for taking the time to tune in. Again, if you are watching this on Apple Podcast, if you're listening to this or watching this on Apple Podcast, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcast or watching this on Facebook or wherever you're at, please take the time to like, share, and review. Help other people see it. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success.